Hey, it's Tim. I studied the typography for 44 design systems to identify common patterns and boil them down to nine insights. These insights will help answer common questions around fonts, organization, naming conventions, type scales, sizes, line height, tracking, and scaling for a responsive design. Here's how I studied these systems. First, I looked for systems built in Figma so that I could quickly extract and study the textiles. I ended up using designsystems.com and designsystemsforfigma.com. And I went with the assumption that these resources contained the top systems. Here's a complete list of what I studied. Second, I created a spreadsheet on Airtable to map out the standard variables such as textile name, font name, font weight, and so on. Third, I extracted 1,127 textiles and put them into the spreadsheets. Fourth, I looked for common patterns by sorting, grouping, and creating charts. What are the most common fonts used by these systems? Here's a bar chart that shows this. On the x-axis, you have all the fonts. On the y-axis, you'll see the number of design systems that use that particular font. When we zoom in, you'll see the four tallest bars on the right side representing the most common fonts. 7 out of 44 or 15.9% of the systems were using Inter, SF Pro Display, or SF Pro Text. 5 out of 44 or 11.36% were using Roboto. Overall, I noticed that the top fonts are either native fonts or Google fonts. My assumption is that these fonts are available for a majority of their users and helps with performance and loading times. What was the most common way of organizing textiles? I boiled it down to four levels that build the typographic hierarchy. Each level has a specific role and a font size range. The first level is display, which tends to be the largest size. And you might be asking, what do display textiles do? And I felt that Joseph Mueller Brockman puts it best. Display work refers to words or type matter, which is made to stand out from the rest of the text by specially striking arrangement or by the use of larger, bold, or italic faces. The second level is heading, which has the role of creating titles for sections of information and helping users quickly identify and glance through. The third level is body. For simplicity's sake, I also group links into this level since they tend to be around the same size. To sum it up, the body has the role of containing the main content. The fourth and last level is label, also known as subtitles, captions, or small text. And this level usually has the role of supporting the body text. Now that we've identified the four levels, you might be asking how many textiles were on each level? Let's take a look at this chart. For display, we have an average of four textiles. For heading, we have an average of six. For body, we have an average of three. And for label, we have an average of three. So what are the different ways to name the textiles? I noticed a pattern that consisted of a base and up to two modifiers. An example would be display extra large where the base is display and the modifier is a t-shirt size like extra large. I'll list the different types of bases and modifiers so you can try the different combinations for yourself. Here are the four types of bases that I observed. First is a typographic level, such as display, heading, body, link, or label. The second is HTML tags, such as h1, h2, h3, or p. The third is a token approach, such as font size 1, font size 2, and font size 3. The last is t-shirt sizing, such as extra small, small, medium, large, or extra large. Now, here are the eight types of modifiers that I observed. First is font weight, such as regular, medium, semi-bold, and bold. The second is numerals, such as 100, 200, 300, and all the way up to 900. The third is t-shirt sizing with words or abbreviations, such as LG or large. The fourth is text emphasis, such as italic or underline. This modifier is extremely useful 
because it prevents designers from breaking their textiles when underlining certain parts of the body text. The fifth is context, which indicates where and how designers should use the textiles. Examples of some of these names can be link navigation or section header. The sixth is letter case property, such as uppercase. The seventh is interaction state, such as default, hover, focus, active, or disabled. And just a heads up, the link textiles were the only ones that use this modifier. The last is device size, such as desktop, mobile, large screen, and small screen. Overall, the most common combination that I observed was typographic level, t-shirt size, and font weight. Some examples are heading large and heading large bold. My assumption is that this naming convention is popular because it works well with the prefix slash style name convention that Figma uses to group textiles. What are the most common typescale ratios? If you're not familiar with type scales, you can kind of think of it as a ramp that goes from the smallest to the largest font size, and you calculate each size increment by multiplying it by a ratio. The higher the ratio, the higher the contrast between each size increment. So I identified the base size of each design system, which tend to be the body text ranging between 13, 14, or 16. And then I matched the textiles to the nearest type scale ratio. When we look at this chart, we have the type scale ratios on the X axis and the different colors representing the different design systems. And you'll see the largest cluster around the major second ratio. 75% of these systems were using major second, 16% were using minor third, 4.5% were using major third, and 4.5% were using minor second. Just a couple of things to keep in mind. These systems did not use all of the size increments in their respective type scale. Also, whenever you create a type scale, it tends to generate decimal values. However, I noticed that most systems rounded those values to the whole number or to the closest even number. So what are the most common font sizes? The size increments depend on the type scale ratio. However, I will be listing out the most common sizes for all the scales per level. For display, the common sizes were 36, 42, 48, 60, 72, 78, and 96. For heading, the common sizes were 14, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 40, and 48. For body, the common sizes were 12, 13, 14, 16, and 18. For label, the common sizes were 10, 12, 13, and 14. What were the most common line height values? Figma gives designers the option to set the line heights using percentages or set values. For systems that set line heights with specific values, they tend to be in multiples of four so that it matches the baseline or works well with their spacing standards. For this video, I'll only look at the line height percentages to help you apply them proportionally to any size. For display, the average line height was 120.81%. For heading, the average line height was 132.36%. For body, the line height was 147%. For label, the average line height was 141.76%. You'll notice that there is a trend where the line height percentage is lower for the larger font size ranges. And once it reaches the smaller sizes, the line height tends to be higher to make the text more legible. When applying this data to textiles, I personally like to use increments of 10 or 5. An example is setting the line height to 140% instead of 141.76%. What were the most common letter spacing values? Since we are creating textiles in Figma, we can set the letter spacing in pixels or percentages. For this video, I'll only provide the ranges and percentages so that you can apply them relative to your font sizes. For display level, the average range was between negative 2.5% and negative 1%. For heading level, the average range was between negative 2% and 0%.
For body level, the average range was between 0% and 1%. For label, the average range was between 0 and 3%. You'll notice that the larger font sizes have lower tracking percentages, which makes the spacing between the letters tighter. And on the other end, the smaller font sizes for body and label levels have higher tracking percentages, which creates looser spacing between the letters. To sum it up, these are ranges that you can try for your fonts, and some fonts may render differently even if you have the same specs, so I highly recommend adjusting them accordingly. So how do these systems scale the textiles for responsive design? I identified three different ways that they were addressing this issue, and I'll provide the links to the examples in the description below. Method number one, create separate textile groups per breakpoint range such as extra small, small, and medium. Then you would scale down all the textiles for each breakpoint range by adjusting the base size in the type scale. For example, if you're using 16 as a base size for all the textiles in the medium breakpoint range, then you would use 14 as the base size for the small breakpoint range. You can find examples of this method in the Shopify Polaris and the Elastic Design System. Method number two, create separate textile groups for just the headings per breakpoint range. For example, there'd be a group of headings for the small and another for the medium breakpoint range and another for the large breakpoint range. Once you divide the headings into separate groups, you would scale down all the heading textiles down by one position in the type scale as you go down to the smaller breakpoint ranges. For example, if the large breakpoint range has heading 1 set as 48 and heading 2 as 40, you would set the heading 1 in the medium breakpoint range as 40. You can find examples of this method in the Mobile Live, Radius, and Chakra design system. Method number 3. This method is similar to method 2, however the only difference is that you're scaling down the largest headings per breakpoint range. For example, you would only scale down headings 1 through 4 and keep headings 5 through 6 alone. You can find examples of this in the pajamas and the paradigm design system. Overall, I highly recommend testing and seeing which method works best for you and your team. If you found this video helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you hit the like button. And if you want to see more bite-sized content, be sure to check out my TikTok or Instagram. Peace.